Good morning and welcome back to another episode of the Creepy and Paranormal Show. Today's show is proudly brought to you by two of our main sponsors. First one is going to be a new sponsor who are really, really excited about getting on board because it relates to food, which is always great. So I will be introducing them a little bit later in the show. But just to say that today's show is going to be an awesome one because the weather has played the part. It's nice and overcast. We've had a bit of rain this morning. So it definitely sets the tone for today's show. So on today's show, we got quite a, an awesome segment uh, with one of my best mates, Jared, who is going to be telling us an interesting story about Pilgrim's Rest. How's it, Jay? How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, oh, I'm it's very <laughs> no, it's so <laughs> awesome to have you on the show. I've been trying to get Jared on the show doing the story for quite a while, and we actually wanted to plan on going down to Pilgrim's Rest and recording the show live there. But you know, life just gets in the way, so it's a bit busy. But before we jump into that show, a bit of interesting breaking news that came through this morning. Um, Jay, I'm not too sure, have you heard about the case of Gabby Petito and uh, Brian Laundry? I have heard the things on the news, and I think uh, my, my future wife is very interested in that story. Uh, I don't know much about it, so I haven't been following the stories. Okay. I just know that they were YouTubers, yeah. and uh, she went missing, and then he went missing, or he he was his main suspect in her murder. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if she has been murdered. But yeah, so, uh, okay, that's exactly it. So, basically, uh, like you said, they were YouTubers. Um, they basically started a whole series on doing like a road trip from their van and, and and vlogging is the word uh from their van um then they were out on back backpacking i'd say and she went missing because he returned home with in her car without her Heck. and um so yeah long, this is basically just a shortened version of the story she went missing and he returned home and nothing was said about it then he went missing as well and shortly after that they found her remains and when they did an autopsy they found out that it was due to strangulation that she had died which obviously points at one thing which is the the fiance which is brian laundry and this i think it's been for the last three weeks he's been missing and everyone's been looking the his family haven't cooperated at all um and from what i saw this morning and understood the parents his parents decided they were going to help with the search with the fbi and within like 30 minutes of them searching the parents found his backpack with a notebook and some of his remains and they later determined that from dental records it was his body so he was found dead now as well um the main thing is pointing to he committed suicide so i'm assuming his body was out there for quite a while uh we always look my mom in particular she was nuts about the story i've been following it every day trying to see if they found him yet but it seems like now he is found dead and you can't, can never assume when it comes to a case like this, but it's it's safe to say that he did strangle and kill her and then went on to take his life. The main thing for me is that his parents obviously knew all this time. And I understand as parents, you want to protect your child, but you must also understand her parents, what they were going through, not knowing what happened to their daughter. So yeah, it's quite a wild case um, coming out now that just broke this, this morning as well. So it just shows you that like, you know, you never know with people, I mean, they were happily in love, well, so it seemed. Um, but obviously, once this happened, a lot of her friends came out and started talking about his um, dodgy attitude and things like that. And there were signs that could have all of this happened. So, yeah, it's rather worrying. But um, the main thing is that he's been found now. So, yeah, we're going to be moving on to the main topic of the show. But before we do, let's take a break for our next sponsor. Now, if there's one thing that I love more than doing creepy and paranormal videos, it is eating pizza. But not just any pizza. Pizza from Little Naples Pizzeria. 
Their menu offers a great selection of pizza, calzone, tremazinis, as well as pastas. And they also offer burgers, chips, and buffalo wings, which is something really great to add on the side of your pizza. They prepare their food using only the highest and quality fresh ingredients, so you can be sure that you will taste freshness with every bite. Now, Little Naples Pizzeria is based here in Impala Park, um, just down the way, I think it's number 24 Freeland Road. And I'll tell you something, guys, they have the biggest selection of pizzas. I think that's probably my biggest nightmare is having to look at the menu and make a decision on only one pizza. Luckily for us, there are seven days in a week, which means you could try seven pizzas <laughs> in an ideal world, yes. Guys, come on, you got to hit up, hit up Little Naples Pizzeria to order and taste the best pizza in town. They now have two branches and are looking to expand. So if you want to own your own store, please feel free to contact them as well. That's Little Naples Pizzeria. Okay, so this is the exciting part. Um, so I'm trying to think where Jared first told me the story. But when he told me, I'm like, flip and hell, this has got to be going on my channel. So Jay, okay. Do you want to start from the beginning about this whole story about Pilgrim's Rest? Sure. So um, what usually happens is we go on a family holiday somewhere around South Africa. Um, and this year, it turns out we went to a place called Crystal Springs. Um, it's quite a small place. Uh, there's not much happening. It's like an old historic town, uh, Pilgrim's Rest. And we thought, okay, no, 100%, let's go there. But then the weather was terrible. It was probably the rainiest period they've had in like years. It was foggy. Oh, it was, it was It was like set up perfectly yeah. for this, the story I'm about to tell you. And uh, there was a ghost tour happening. So we decided, no, this is going to be cool. Um, I didn't believe in ghosts. I didn't think it was at all possible. Yeah. So I was like, no, cool. Let's just go on it. I mean, what could it be? So <laughs> at the beginning of the tour, they give us a bunch of langtons um, and we head out. Uh, it's an old mining town. So the first Anglo settlers that came to to africa came to mine gold and find riches here so it's an old mining town a couple hundred years old so yeah. we went the first place we went to was a house called allen glade okay i've heard about um, that yeah. so what they used to do is they used to combine the the uh the man of the household and the woman of the household's names together uh, to form a name uh, okay. like a name for the house uh, so it was allen glade manor and um, what it is, is I think his name was Alan something and her name was Gladys something. Sorry, I've got to interrupt quickly. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we're sitting here busy recording and as we're recording, Jared points outside his window and a freaking black cat has just walked <laughs> across. So for people that are superstitious, a black cat path, uh, crossing your path is not very good luck. That's it was pretty, a very raggedy looking one Yeah, too. that's pretty <laughs> fucked up that that just happened. <laughs> Anyways, back to Pilgrim's fucking rest. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird and it's gone. I don't know where it's gone. So I, you may have heard me stutter there for like a second because I like looked and I stopped and I was like, that is a cat. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but yeah, so uh, we went around this whole house, like old school mining house. Like a store is like tin roofs, uh, massive property, big, big story. Um, I wasn't really freaked out by that. It was like a, you know, like a normal ghost tour. It's like dark. We've only been given langton, so there's not a lot of light. It is yeah. spooky. It's foggy outside. They told us a couple of ghost stories there, but nothing really like grabbed me or scared. Yeah, me. it was very interesting, and I would recommend it. So I'm not going to tell the whole story because I think it takes away from the experience. From the experience. Yeah. Um, but then afterwards, the second part of the goal. Uh, the golf tour the, <laughs> the the ghost tour is that we hop back into this bus and we ride up this hill but i mean like this bus is fully loaded there must be about 15 of us or so it's foggy it's raining we can barely we can't the car is barely moving quickly at all and the whole ride there they're telling us like stories and different things here and it, it was blowing my mind um a little bit about pilgrim's rest is that the reason it's called pilgrim's rest is that they back in these days when there was mining there was a man that unidentified man like a proper John Doe kind yeah. of situation and uh, he stole and he landed up being killed and uh, I think back then it was very much uh, an Anglican a community being yeah. very much English and uh, for in order for someone to go to heaven they need to be uh, buried in such a way that they I think facing yeah east facing west or west something facing. like that yeah so it goes up with the rising sun and then goes down with the setting sun and uh, they believe that because he died, he didn't face his punishment for stealing. So what they did is they set his his grave 
uh, north south or south okay. north. Okay. So if you go to the the cemetery, all the graves are pointing the same direction except for his one. And his one is the only one that's got like a little cross and it has no name and it just says like Pilgrim's Rest and the date. Wow. And that's and no one knows anything about him, where he came from, who he was. Jeez, um, that's heavy. So that that was the main spooky story and I thought that was going to be the the story of the evening. Correct. Yeah. So we go through to the ghost uh, tour and it's very like eerie. It's spooky. Um, there's like cows uh, feeding on the grass and okay. whatnot in there, and it's dark. Eh? So like what time more or less was this? Oh gosh, this was late in the evening. Uh, I think the the whole tour started at seven p.m. and we have probably been so it's probably quite latish between ten. Okay. Uh, I know we got home just after midnight. All right, okay, that, no, that's fine. But it was it was quite a an intriguing uh, tour. But anyway, so we're going through and we're going to different graves, the things that they found very interesting. My favorite story of the evening, I'll give this one away, yeah. uh, is a story about a man called Um Bwempi, <laughs> which means Uncle Tree, pretty much. Like, yeah. And the reason they called him Um Bwempi is because he was incredibly, incredibly tall. I think he was like six foot eight or something along those lines. Jeez. So quite quite a, a giant of a man. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 the reason they chose him to tell us a story is because back then, all the, the coffins were made a certain size. And I think okay. a maximum size that they could be, because people weren't really tall. No. Especially a couple hundred years ago. And yeah. it was quite a, a feat to get to, to that size. And the coffin itself, I think, was probably only about, what's a good coffin size? Like ah, about six, six foot, yeah. Yeah, about six foot just over, maybe. So the way that they had to fit, so they, they didn't have another coffin for him and they couldn't make one for him. <laughs> so what they did is they landed up chopping his legs at the knee no. <laughs> and laying his legs next to him in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was absolutely ridiculous. Like yeah. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> and... Um, they said he, he carried on growing within his coffin and there was like a little crack because no, they, they, <laughs> they used to cover them in cement and there was a little tree growing out of it like a little wow. thing sprouting and i was like this is the coolest thing i've ever seen like i don't care if they've made the story up this is the sickest it's legit, thing I've, yeah it's so it, it was like i was like this is so cool I and mean, i'm just thinking now like I, I know with the egyptians when they bury them they bury them with their riches and certain yes. things because they believe they take it with them to the afterlife Imagine this worm <laughs> went to the afterlife and yeah, he's chopped off at the knees and he's carrying his freaking legs around with him. <laughs> Poor God, they don't even think about his religion. Shame, man. <laughs> Yo, it, was, it was crazy. Like when they told me the story and then I was just like picturing, you know, like you kind of, it forces you to imagine what it would look like. Yeah. Like a, like a body sitting there with like his feet. Po I hope they pointed his toes down. At least the right <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like some kind of Or they could have interlocked his fingers with his toes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine... Uh, 2,000 years from now, our civilization's lost and archaeologists come and they find this grave and they think, what has gone on here? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? Humans eventually killed themselves, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was the story and we were going around and it was, it was very interesting. And next minute, my brother notices something out of the corner of his eye. So he turns and looks at it. But now we've got lanterns, so we don't have torches, so we can't shine anywhere. Yeah, you can't see very far so with the lantern. he sees this figure... And it's like quite a big white figure. Okay. Um, he, he, I think he was taken aback from it because he was quiet for a few seconds. Yeah. And he kind of said, like he stopped the lady in the middle of the story and pointed to this thing. And she, obviously she's probably quite old, couldn't really see. And she says, no, it's probably one of the cows that are feeding in the grass. Yeah. Uh, so my brother looks and he says, no, not a chance. So like I turn and look at this thing and it's like a figure at the moment. It looks, it looks like a person. Like a silhouette of a person. Yes, but yeah. they don't have a light and they're like kind of moving. So I move in to take a closer look and I stop dead in my tracks. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like what the actual, yeah. yeah. I was like, no, like what are you? And I tried to speak out to it. Okay. And I was like, hello, like, hello, who are, like, what, what the I'm fuck sure the you? words didn't probably come no, out they, either. No, they probably didn't. Now, I'm shitting myself, but now, like, I'm like, no, man, this is like a full on prank. Like, this is a lot of yeah. bullshit. So I take a step closer. As I take a step closer, I'm like, not a good idea. I take a few steps back. Yeah. This figure looked like a nun, if that makes sense, okay. but not really. So what I found out later was actually like a matron sister. Yeah. So, like, a nurse. So they used to wear an outfit that looked very similar to that of a nun. So they used to wear, a, I don't know what that... Like that a, veil like thing. Like a veil-like yeah. thing, but it's not 
black and white it was like white so we we busy standing there and this a figure comes towards us and then moves right past us and then all of a sudden goes to the top of the cemetery but like it not it doesn't look like it's taking steps and it's it's a very it's a quite a big figure yeah now Pilgrim's Rest the cemetery is on a hill all right and it's very rocky oh, do yourself a favor go and look up pictures on the internet or yeah. anything that you can find and like it, it takes you it's like you're almost hiking through the cemetery if okay. that makes sense like it's very uneven yeah uh, you only have langtons like without those you wouldn't be able to see so this thing just cruises on by no. <laughs> gets to the top of the hill and then opens the gate like you hear the squeaking of a gate like do you know like no. a lock <laughs> and then opens and then like disappears so now we all are shitting ourselves my my butthole is quivering <laughs> um i don't know what to do like you're in shock we all group together like it's like a panic all of us are on such high alert like you hear a, a, a stick snap or something yeah. like that like someone step everybody turns and looks at it and you're yeah. like it's it's weird like um the hairs on my arms are standing up now because it's like an uncomfortable you're feeling re- yeah you're reliving that moment. yes and i wish like the only way to to explain is if you experienced it yeah okay so i'm still like what what was that like how did they do that like what kind of a special effect is this yeah i was like not a chance and that tour guide woman the old lady yeah so she decided like she was like no this is this is enough now we're leaving oh really yeah so, so we she, she left yeah so got real for her we got back to the car and i think everybody had like kind of settled down and uh the driver of the bus had like a torch and everybody was kind of comfortable and then she started telling us a story so back also in the mining days i think it was closer maybe to a hundred years ago okay during the world war um she had a whole bunch of they had a hospital there that they actually eventually turned into a a dorming hostel oh wow so there's a story of this night matron yeah that's a nursing sister and she landed up committing suicide and the story goes is that she can't pass on because in that um in anglican beliefs if you commit suicide you cannot pass on to heaven yeah, your spirit burn yes burn, yeah and they they believe that uh, her her soul is moving around here trying to move forward and she wanders Jeez. around looking for her kids because she had two children so she, every time someone comes into the cemetery or where her where she is believed to to have mm. died and passed away she comes and sees if any of the people there are her children that is freaking crazy yeah and she can't pass on so anyway i was like this is absolutely mental but i'm still in my head thinking they've done some kind of cgi holographic crap because yeah. like i've never ever seen anything like that and i've never seen anything like that again yeah so i was like no this is like the like this was crazy when we got back to the house i left something in the car <laughs> and it stayed there, and it was sure. dark and then i was like no i need to go and get it and i mean it was like being back at being like six years old now take a I was probably in my late teens then. Yeah. I was probably like 16, 18, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, I'll work out the exact year. I think it was 20, 2012, 2013. All right. So yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, I'm still a young gun. <laughs> but anyway, so I go to the car and now it's like dark. It's still misty. And I, I like bolted back because I was so shit scared. Like, I don't know what it was. Like, the experience itself, like, subconscious, like, on that surface, I was like, no, I'm cool. But on the inside, I was dying. But anyway, the next day comes around, and we're like, no, we're going to go back to the cemetery, see what it looks like in the daylight. Yeah. So we went down for lunch in the town. We did, like, a, a gold um, panning Okay, where you're going, yeah. yeah. I was just, like, experiencing the history of the town. Mm. So we go back to the cemetery, and I'm, th- now I'm like, I'm going to catch these guys out. Like, I'm going to see how they did how this. How they planned this year. I shit you not, where this thing was work, walking it was just rocks no. and stones. And there was in, it's impossible to walk across there smoothly. The way, this, like this was figure, hovering, yeah. Yeah, this lady, this figure glided over those stones, glided. And in the dark, it was almost impossible to see because we had the langtons. But we carried on. And then remember I told you about that gate, that squeaky yeah. gate. I looked at the top of the hill to see where this gate was and I saw absolutely Noid. nothing. <laughs> there was no gate, there was no fence. Um, it, another weird story is we didn't see those cars either and it kind of was like very odd. But anyway, <laughs> this figure cruised out to, to open a gate and we have no idea what this gate was, where it was from. And to this day, it baffles me 
what that gate was, where she was going. She's like, that's pretty heavy. Eh? Yeah, and I wasn't, it, and it wasn't the ghost experience I was expecting. I was really expecting something to do with the Pilgrim's Rest, the the grave that yeah. was set uh, like perpendicular to the. Yeah, other that graves. was the main attraction. That was the, the main attraction, and this one just came out of nowhere. And it, the fact that it caught our um, our guard, our tour guard, our ghost tour guard. Yeah off guard to the fact that she was like okay ghost to her done like i was like finale i was like come on like seriously yeah you see for me for me that makes it even more real is the fact that it spooked her out uh and that definitely wasn't scripted or part of the tour yeah and and i'd almost like to somehow get hold of her and chat to her and see if it's ever happened again after that or if it was the first time that it happened maybe so from my understanding pilgrim's rest has become like empty like it's uh what's the word deserted deserted mm. literally it's become a ghost town <laughs> um so i i would love to go back there and I, I definitely think even though we're not recording this live there yeah this is a trip that you and i we have to do. yeah we're gonna add this to our bucket list we have to do it even if we don't go on the same tour we go there ourselves at night mm. to experience this whole thing i think that would even be better is going there just without the tour yeah and apparently that the hospital that i'm talking about became a boarding house for a girls high school okay and now that girls high school doesn't exist anymore but they still use it as a like a backpackers and oh, really? i would love to go and stay there for a night oh, man like stay in an old that's got to be hospital that's now like a dorm room and just the whole town has history and a lot of these towns and correct me if i'm wrong but a lot of these mining towns they use blacks as slaves and yes. really treated them poorly so you'd think there'd be a lot of unhappy spirits in a place like this as well which would oh 100 percent uh, make it more possible that you would find something there. back then i wasn't very keen on having a look and uh looking around like this was my very first experience of anything yeah um but i wouldn't want to say otherworldly because it is of our world yeah um but definitely, I think there's a lot of history there. Like even at that house, there was like a, a a maid's quarters, if that makes sense. Okay. And back then, it wasn't a maid's quarters; they were they were slaves' quarters. Oh, jeez. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this ho- the house Alan Glade was was it was beautiful in every sense of the word. Like, but it was so old school. There were still lions heads from lions that they hunted, like jeez. maybe within five kilometers of their house you know crazy uh there's old river pans uh there there was okay i'll tell you a little bit more about uh alan glade while we were there yeah so they also told us like all these spooky stories i know i didn't want to go too in depth but now i'm like yeah you 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 know what like it's it's really cool like it's like a a really cool memory of mine and it's something that um yeah it's it's always stuck with me you know what i mean so we would go to this house, massive mining house, a uh, double story house, Do you know, like the old kitchens, like uh, chandelier kind of Jeez. things on the walls. Old school, um, right? He was like a mining director. So he ran the, the gold mine. Okay. Um, so he was like a head huncher of the time. Uh, they had really nice gardens and whatnot. Uh, so what happened is they had, so we went into the garden, okay? And I saw this, a, a tombstone there, like a cross. And I was like, that's very weird and it's very small. So we're going to have a look and whatnot. And we're looking at this and she said, no, this is where they buried their dog. And their dog had drowned trying oh. to save uh, their daughter oh, man. in the river at the bottom. So they carried on and uh, the story goes that this little girl drowned in the river years before they moved in there. And this girl went down there with a dog because this, this little girl had come and she was playing with her the whole day and they were chatting wow. and whatnot. And next minute, all three of them had disappeared. Jeez. So that was the dog, the daughter, and this little the girl, girl that they yeah. had found at the river. So they went down looking for her and they found her floating in the water with the dog. Oh, no. And they managed... She was okay. It was okay. like a... What would you call it? Like a, drown, a dry drowning situation where yeah. she didn't actually... Get okay. water, but the dog was gone. Oh no! So they. they I don't know what's worse for me because I love dogs. I know <laughs> the the dog had died, so obviously drowned and whatnot. And when she came together and everything, she told them the story about this little girl that came and collected her and said, "No, let's go down to the river." And she, she said that she couldn't really remember much, but that we must go and play in the water. And they were saying it was this girl trying to Jeez. to drown her. I don't know how true that was. It was a very spooky story, but at the same time, like even talking about it now, it doesn't like grip me yeah i think it was just like there was a dog that was buried there <laughs> that was the main thing <laughs> yeah and uh but it was very interesting and they used to say like 
on previous ghost tours like people could hear change like do you know like that sound of coins in a pocket yeah yeah, yeah. and apparently the owner of the house the man of the house is alan man uh used to like flick change in his pocket like okay like rats check, rattle, around, rattle yeah. around and um so i listened for that the whole ghost tour i didn't hear anything okay. like that <laughs> but it, it was just like this is where he used to do that and he's like you can still smell his cigars and like the, the weird things in the house so it's it's very spooky at night yeah uh, but in that sense, I didn't experience anything out of the ordinary. Yeah. And um, but well worth the trip. I think the the way that they did it was was very cool, uh, very intuitive. Like that was a like, kind of fun. But the fact that when we went to the the graveyard, yeah, it's freaked out this lady. Just shows that it wasn't something that it was planned for her ghost to it. It kind of just happened. Jeez yeah that that that's really crazy like and i mean i can genuinely believe how scary that must be um my wife and i we went to a, a village in swaziland a very rural village she's i'm guessing maybe it's just about nine ten years ago a village was called balumbu so they had electricity and water obviously but no shops absolutely nothing there you're in the middle of the mountains and about a kilometer away there was a, a ghost mining town which you could hike to so our host at the time was a friend of ours from the church so the three of us decided we we're going to go hike out there in the day which we did and it was quite a, a strenuous hike you couldn't just go and walk across there there was like a, a section of water you had to cross over mine sand we actually had to improvise and use planks to cross this water otherwise we wouldn't have made it across um, and we walked into this like ghost town which was very eerie. I mean, it was in the middle of the day. It was, well, it had its own school and everything. The books, textbooks were all left there untouched. <laughs> it is literally like people up and left at the click of a finger. And it, I just remember how hot it was that day and how quiet it was. All you could hear was like wind uh, rustling through the, the grass and that. And at the same time, you used to hear doors just closing back and forward and banging and that in this place. And I mean, there was just the three of us plenty of cows walking around um, very very spooky and that is in the daytime and when we got back to the village and that we were chatting a bit more and then our, our host actually told us that there was leopard spotted um, in that area not so long ago Africa yeah and I was <laughs> like you know how could you let us go there with no weapons no communication no one knows where we are. we've got no cell service nothing and there could be freaking leopard walking around there um, but the point of the story is that was in the daytime and I don't get scared often but I felt very eerie like always someone was watching you there and it was just the whole situation of how they left their place unabandoned so quickly abandoned sorry not unabandoned so I can only imagine what Pogum's rest at night must seem like uh, I think we have to have to we have to trip. and I think there's another spot that we need to go so my family when they moved out here we bought a farm all right um, and We've got a little guest house called Leilaka. But the, the actual original, Leilaka means uh, nice, lazy, if that makes sense. Lazy, yeah, nice. If you directly translate <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. If you directly translate it, which doesn't work out, lazy, no. nice. But anyway, <laughs> so it's along on the side of a mountain and it's on the way to Pilgrim's Rest. And we have like a road and there's a river going through the, the property at the bottom of the mountain as well. But the old farmhouse, which was probably lost uh, the probably the last person that had lived there was probably in the late i don't know 1800s maybe okay. like 1800s Jeez. yeah 1800s yeah um which was a, a quite a long time ago and there's old bricks and stuff like that and my mom has a lot of stories about that so my mom's actually coming back here from the uk maybe we must get her on to tell us yeah, stories of when she was a young girl because she even stopped me from going to that house oh wow so there must be a lot of spooky stories wow and that okay. i was just thinking about this i feel i feel like my mom would be able to to tell you a couple yeah very cool stories but i mean like an old farmhouse like with a brick suck or like a half a meter thick and Jeez. you know what i mean like solid yeah, solid school, solid like yeah yeah and i remember sneaking up there a couple of times and i remember reading a name i can't re recall what the name was but on the the wall as well and it was it was very it drew me in if that makes sense yeah but i don't know much about it so uh, as much as 
I wanted to come on your show. I want to learn more about this At myself. the same time, I yeah. think it would be best if you you don't talk to her before we do it because then I'd like to see your reaction live. Yes, as well. yeah, definitely. Especially that name. Now that intrigues me, what that name was, who that person was. Yeah, what we, if it was part of our family, if it was before that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my family, my mom's mom is Dutch. Okay. And it was her family that... That this. bought that that farm that right. a, that area yeah okay jeez yeah we have to get your mom on the show she's currently in the uk so when she comes back for mr jared's wedding over here uh, we <laughs> definitely have to do a show on that um yeah i don't know if you there's anything else you want to add do you know what um i would love if someone could ask questions because i feel like i can answer a lot more um it was a very few years ago uh, and I'm, do you know what I would love if my my brother could also be here because he was the one that spotted this this figure, figure initially. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, if you guys have any questions, send them through to to Shane over here, yeah. and he'll pass it on to me, and I'll be more than willing to to answer anything. Uh, yeah. There might be a few details that I've missed out, but I um, I just wish I could. You could experience it for yourself. Yeah. Um, it changed my whole mind on ghosts. Uh, I never, never once believed in ghosts until this this very night. Yeah. And to this day, I still ask myself questions about what I saw, how I saw it, uh, how could that have been? And I mean, this was 2012, so it wasn't like a very modern no. thing. It was in the middle of a mining town. Yeah. It was a ghost tour conducted by ladies that are in their like 70s. <laughs> um, I tried to look them up on the internet, never saw them again. Oh wow. Yeah. So, um, I want. I definitely want to go to that Crystal Springs Mountain Resort again sometime yeah. uh, because it was run through them and find out maybe from them more details. And if we are, even if it's not the same people, if we could still, if there was something available there, because there definitely is that, that place is, is beyond spooky. And I think the nights also fed into it being so foggy and airy. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's sappy plantation. So it means that it's, it's man-made forest they use for cutting down to make paper. Yeah. So when you're driving through that night, it's woodlands. Wow. It's eerie. You it's couldn't, like, full of hills. It any better. It's, it's like the inside of a horror movie. That's what it felt like. So you're on edge already because of the the area that you are in. It's wild. It's it's beautiful. It's it's something that you have to experience Jeez. for yourself. Well, guys, like yeah, you know, Jay just hit the nail on the head there. Um, I think we need to go and do a live show there with video. So for those that don't know, Jared does uh, photography and videography as well. Um, I will link his um, business, uh, his Facebook page, etc., and all his details there. But what I'm trying to get at is we will like to do a show where we go down, Jared's going to film everything, we're going to maybe um, possibly go into the town during the day, chat to some people, locals that have lived there for many years, see what their take is on the, the whole town and the ghost stories, because it's nice to get stories from locals, from people that don't actually profit from running a ghost tour yes. per se and maybe just see what their side of the story is and we can video it and um yeah i think that'll be a great show some fifth generation miners hey that'll be <laughs> proper eh? maybe making some moonshine as well yeah 100 percent. <laughs> so if anyone out there wants to sponsor us or help us make this trip possible please let us know or possibly even join us that'll be great to take one of the listeners down with us and doing a, a little show there for our overseas listeners you have to go and look at more information about this online i will post pictures as well in the video but if you're listening to this on spotify you won't see the pictures so you're going to have to go to my youtube channel and find out more information there um but yeah if you guys have any stories of your own from pilgrim Trips, that'll be also great to hear maybe they tie up to what jared's seen and heard and um, yeah we can definitely take it from there but jay thank you so much for reliving the story i love hearing it every time you've told me it, it like gets better and better so thank you for your time today i appreciate it no, thank you so much for having me uh i love recalling it as well it's something that really fascinates me and yeah thank you for so much for having me on the channel absolutely love it um there's some weird and spooky things out there <laughs> yeah. and uh i love that you you go to your depths to uncover these things awesome stuff thanks man Jay listeners look after yourselves don't forget to like like like, like goodness like <laughs> subscribe and share the hell out of this video take care and don't forget to look under your beds tonight cheers <laughs>